yeah, full screen presentation mode. Is Excellent. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, on my behalf, uh, thank you to all the previous presentations here. Uh, I think we had interesting viewpoints on many of the topics uh, I'll also briefly uh, mention here in my presentation. Uh, the presentation is titled uh, Experiences Integrating Existing AMQP-Based Communication. And this is work that we have done on, on uh, message bus-based communication, exploring how OPC UA PubSub uh, can be fitted into this. And this is work executed in, in a research project here at Tampere University. And uh, let's go into the topic. So in this presentation, I'll first give a quick motivation why PubSub can be of, of uh, big importance in future system development. And then I'll go through uh, how we implemented this integration with existing AMQP messaging to OPC UA PubSub using AMQP and then give some details on the experiences we had implementing the adapters. Uh, so it was already shown that, that this typical automation pyramid is slowly uh, moving towards more connected systems, cyber physical systems that, that connect to each other uh, based on a need point to point instead of having this strict hierarchical system that we have been used to in the past. And regarding future industrial Internet of Things, it won't be only the industrial uh, systems that need to communicate, but we need to share this data across other domains as well, whether it's uh, energy systems, mobility, or, or buildings or whatever. And for this, there are a lot of efforts going on how to federate and manage data sharing between different stakeholders across these uh, emerging ecosystems where one could say that data is, is the new fuel and we need more sophisticated tools to manage and federate how our data uh, is made available, how we can control it and how others can use it, for example, in providing smart services based on data and, and artificial intelligence. So a quick intro to, to why uh, what is asynchronous messaging and in this kind of publish subscribe. Uh, the main idea with asynchronous messaging is that the, the parties can send messages to each other when they need and, and not when requested what we're used to in this traditional uh, request response model typical to client server architectures. And we, we have many examples where we need this kind of communication where we don't control the other end, for example, or the operations take long on the other end. And the publish subscribe pattern is often associated with asynchronous messaging. And the idea here is that the, the publisher sends a message only once uh, to some kind of uh, transport medium. It can be a broker or, or uh, some kind of broadcast type of messaging. But then uh, from there, it is retrieved by a number of uh, receivers. If we use this publish subscribe pattern, we usually have some kind of middleware uh, message broker in between that transmits uh, the messages to the subscribers. Examples of these are, for example, MQTT that was mentioned here earlier and AMQP as well. And if you take a quick introduction to this OPC UA PubSub, uh, I divided it, or I can see that there are two kind of main use cases for PubSub. One is this shop floor low latency communication that is quite often talked about, and we'll have more information on this in a later presentation today. But then the other important aspect is this integration of OPC UA in cloud applications using MQTT and uh, AMQP. And we have uh, Two different methods to, to implement this PubSub. 
We can use multicast-based implementation where we have UDP or, or Ethernet TSN, or then this broker-based. And there are two um, kind of formats to transmit the data, UA datagram protocol messages, or then JSON, which is the typical one used in, in internet-based communication and applications. And here's a figure from, from the specification of the brokered model. Uh, the idea is that uh, we have some kind of data, an information space available, and from there data gets written onto a communication medium here, a middleware, and using that then a subscriber can retrieve the data. And the data messages or data set messages are transported using this broker, same as data set metadata messages. The metadata messages can provide the semantics to, to the actual payload being sent. Then in addition to this, we have the typical uh, means for uh, accessing uh, security groups, uh, keys for signing and encrypting the messages. So we can achieve end-to-end -end encryption and integrity of the messages as well. But the interesting thing here with this brokered model is that there is no requirement for an OPC UA server or an actual OPC UA client in order to perform this OPC UA PubSub messaging. So this brings this communication much closer to, to what we already saw here regarding MQTT and, and AMQP, which is used to implement the scalable uh, communication systems um, in, in, in the cloud. Now I'm going to talk about the project uh, where we tested this and, and the use case for, for integrating PubSub and existing AMQP communication. The objective in the project was to, to uh, implement this kind of decoupled systems integration uh, where we have a number of uh, sub processes uh, sharing data, communicating with each other in order to implement this kind of coordinating optimal control layer. And plant wide is here the key word that it can actually span quite large systems, uh, even include logistics constraints and similar. Uh, things to take into account. And in order to, to achieve this and not have this point-to-point -point integration with lots of clients and servers, we opted for a message bus-based uh, broker approach using AMQP as the solution here. AMQP was chosen uh, in favor of, of MQ, instead of MQTT, uh, mainly because it provides more features, multi tenant solutions can easily be implemented. You can sandbox environments. You can scale it much better than MQTT, et cetera. And MQTT is, is fairly good and very scalable to tens of thousands of messages as well. But you have only one kind of address space there. And then if you need to scale it, you need to partition it yourself manually. Whereas AMQP, you can have a cluster of, of brokers network together. And then we have had a number of existing standards implementing the uh, message exchange here between these different systems. For example, the idea was that we have a number of, of DCS systems here that produce data uh, that can then be pushed into model or algorithm development that can then further be used by optimization models that, that calculate some estimates or predictions how to optimally control the individual processes and eventually the, the whole uh, system of systems in a, as optimal way as possible. So the idea was here that we have this AMQP communication in place. We have messages uh, used for this communication or this coordinating layer. Uh, how can we integrate OPC UA PubSub messaging into this? And what we then decided to test is, is how easy it is to implement these kind of adapters that basically take the payload and uh, translate it to another format. So there were basically two, two adapters created uh, as part of this. 
and, and a master's thesis uh, has been uh, written regarding this topic. Antti Kätkytniemi is the, the author of that. If I speed up a bit, um, we have messages in, in XML. XML was chosen for a reason. I won't go into details here. But in, in OPC UA PubSub, we have this JSON format of these uh, messages. And here you can see better the, the messages we used in, in this COCO project. We have, for example, a timestamps here, and then we have values and also the, the features of interest that we want to communicate, for example, to, to another um, system. A simple mapping was implemented from XML to JSON. Similar one can be also implemented for JSON if, if this source would be in JSON. And Finally, we see that these values, timestamps, etc., are translated into uh, JSON according to the PubSub specification. And how this works in practice is that we have uh, a publisher that publishes this type of uh, XML data shown in the XML example. It goes to the same AMQP message bus. Uh, any existing subscriber can make use of that data, but there is also uh, with configurations, we then manage to, to, to have this adapter to pick up certain messages that we know that a PubSub subscriber needs. And the adapter picks up the messages, translates them, puts them back on the message bus, and then they are subscribed again and consumed by the, the PubSub subscriber. And similarly, the same process goes for if we have OPC UA PubSub data available on the message bus, we have an adapter and those are translated to the uh, PubSub subscribers as well as to the COCOP subscribers using the XML format. And uh, to summarize some, some of our findings here, uh, this type of OPC UA PubSub uh, communication is fairly easy to implement on these kind of uh, broker, brokered uh, platforms. And it was also very easy to integrate uh, with existing AMQP-based communication and messaging. Uh, this de decoupling of, of systems is very good uh, considering future needs where we more extensively utilize data for, for different kind of AI, data analytics, etc. Security can be enforced end to end. We can have the typical signing and encryption or, or, or either one of them. And the point to note here is that uh, any client can be an OPC UA PubSub party, a publisher or a subscriber. And this was shown here. And we actually implemented the translators using standard JavaScript, uh, but it could have been any, any language uh, as well. And PubSub can ease the burden of traditional OPC servers when, when there are many connections, many systems depend on this data. Uh, once information is made available on this kind of message bus, then it doesn't matter how many subscribers there are to the data. And this is, is, uh, can be seen as a good way uh, in the future when, when we need to utilize data in different data spaces. Thank you for your attention. Um, I left some time here for questions.